Principles of Fracture Mechanics Plane Strain Fracture Toughness Plane Strain Fracture Toughness is a material property that depends on many factors but it's independent of thickness. This is unlike regular fracture toughness which is going to be dependent on thickness. The term plane strain means that when a crack is subjected to a load in a tensile mode, you can see figure one, there is no strain component perpendicular to the front and back faces, or in other words, towards the interior of the material. Brittle materials with lower plane strain fracture toughness values are more vulnerable to catastrophic failure, while relatively large plane strain fracture toughness values are seen in more ductile materials. This makes fracture mechanics especially useful in predicting catastrophic failure for materials with intermediate ductilities. Looking at figure one, we can see our material over here. In order for this to be in the tensile mode, we want our stresses to be vertical, like this. We can see our front faces over here as well as our back face. And what makes this the tensile mode is there's no perpendicular stresses. Looking at figure two, if we zoom in on one of those fronts, we can see the perpendicular stresses would be like that, but we don't want these, so no forces perpendicular. Another name for tensile mode would be mode one or opening. Example problem. A wing component for an aircraft is fabricated from an aluminum alloy that has a plane strain fracture toughness of 44 megapascal square root meters. If during service use the component is exposed to a tensile stress of 285 megapascals, determine the minimum length of a surface crack that will lead to fracture. Assume a value of 1.0 for y. To understand this problem better, we'll go ahead and look at our note down at the bottom of the page for y. Y is going to be a dimensionless parameter that depends on both crack and specimen sizes and geometries, as well as the manner of load application. Our first step is to determine what we need to find, and looking at the problem we can see it's going to be the minimum surface crack length, or A. We can also write down what's given. We are given the plane strain fracture toughness. The shorthand for this is going to be a capital K, and the subscript is going to be an IC, that Roman numeral 1. We're also given the applied stress, we'll call that sigma, and the dimensionless parameter already discussed, the shorthand is Y. We have plane strain fracture toughness continued. Looking at our governing equation, we have the plane strain fracture toughness is equal to the dimensionless parameter multiplied by the applied stress times the square root of pi multiplied by the crack length. We're going to need to do some equation manipulation now. So, starting off with this governing equation, we need to go ahead and make this an inequality since we're looking for the minimum. And in order to do this, we'll do the plane strain fracture toughness is less than or equal to this side of the equation since we're looking for a minimum. If we're looking for a maximum, it would be greater than or equal to instead. Next up, we can write down what's known. So with the known value for the plane strain fracture toughness is 44, and units of that are megapascal square root meters. We're also given y of 1.0, and since we, as we discussed that's a dimensionless parameter, there are no units. And finally, the applied stress, which is going to be 285, and units of that are megapascals. What we need then is that minimum surface crack length, and the unit of that are going to be meters, and so you can see we're using meters here earlier in the problem. Before we can plug in numbers though, we must first isolate for the crack length. So using our inequality, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the parameter and the applied stress to get this term right here. We can see that the y and the sigma are just moved over because both sides were divided. Next, we'll square both sides to remove that square root. So we have our plane strain fracture toughness divided by the dimensionless parameter times the applied stress, all of that squared, and that's going to be less than or equal to pi times our crack length. 
Finally, we can divide each side by pi, yielding this equation here. A is greater than or equal to the plane strain fracture toughness divided by pi to the one half power times the dimensionless parameter multiplied by the applied stress, all of that squared. The reason we can do that is by dividing by both sides by pi, it would be 1 over pi, but that's going to be the same thing as 1 over pi to the 1 half squared. The reason I'm doing it this way is just so everything fits in that one term. Finally, we can now plug in values. Using this equation here, we'll plug in what we know. So A is greater than or equal to 44 megapascal square meters. And this is going to be divided by pi to the 1 half multiplied 1.0, and there's no units of that once again, multiplied by that stress 285 megapascals. All of this is going to be raised to the power of 2. First up, those megapascals cancel out, and we can input this into the calculator to find that A is greater than or equal to 0 0.0871 square root meters, and all of this is going to be squared. We'll square the value as well as the units leading to A is greater than or equal to 0 0.0076 meters since meters square rooted squared goes to meters. Now right now we have a greater than or equal to but we're looking for just the minimum. So we can set up a number line if we want and put this value 0 0.0076 meters there. And we know A is going to be greater than or equal to, plus side, minus side, so it's all these numbers over here. So the minimum value you can see then is going to be this 0 0.0076 meters. So our answer then for our crack length minimum is going to be 7.6 millimeters. So if the airplane component has a crack length of 7.66 millimeters, it runs the risk of failing. That's the minimum we require.